Howdy folks. I uh, I don't know what to say. I had originally scheduled on my laptop and my laptop won't do that. And um, I don't know what happened here. I'm trying now I've got to set up my phone because this is the only way to do this. And I don't know if it's happening, although I see a like. So somebody's there. Oh, another like. Oh, another like. Gary Meek is watching. <laughs> Holy sh... Okay, let's start. Sorry about the inconvenience. Our hamsters are running slow with the internet out in the country. And I yelled at the, at the, at the, at the Wi-Fi guy to get off my lawn. And all these people are making comments and I can't read them because my phone is a mile away. Okay, here we go. problems and a shrink could ever say. He's obfuscating, prevaricating, and constantly pontificating, procrastinating, cream cheese trading, and forever belly aching, exasperating, aggravating, irritating, and infuriating, and such an asshole. Get off my lawn! That's grumps. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for tuning in. We're, we went to a but we um, want to advise everyone what? Wait, okay. that Grumps is a frictional character. And any... Honey, they heard the song. Well, fine then. Hm. I'm going to fix this, this camera. you got to understand, folks, that, you know, you pay good money for Internet. And I don't know what they call it anymore, but... Uh, it don't really seem to uh, be living up to all I pay for. I mean, $1.49, you figured I'd get a Taco Bell taco with it or something. Anyways, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, oh, look, I need to, this quarantine is kind of hurting me. My sheep's growing in there. Um, I want to welcome you to, to Grumps, period, the cocktail time. Now this this is a particular new kind of cocktail. It's called a Sanatini. It's made with gin, olives, and hand sanitizer. <laughs> now we're not using much hand sanitizer because that's just more expensive than gin. So, well, what can I say? Cheers, I hope you have something going good. Hope you're enjoying yourself. And for those of you that uh, were going to call in, you can't call in because I'm using the phone right now. So please don't call in. I'm using the phone for this broadcast. So if you know Pammy's phone, call her, and I'd love to talk to you. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and just keep this going here. I'm a little flustered and flummoxed because, God damn this Internet, you know? I mean, I had it all working out, and you have everything going. This is the inaugural day. And what the... And, and what... I know, this is very serious. I'm sh sure hoping everybody's feeling good, getting along with everybody, because I know how hard it is. I know Gidget, she's sure not happy about being stuck at 800 square feet with me. I take up a lot of room, you know. So here's what I hope, is that everybody's happy and healthy and doing what they're supposed to do and washing your hands and washing your friends' hands and washing mostly your hands of other people who you don't like because you need to wash your hands of them anyways but i gotta ask you all something this toilet paper thing i don't get it i just i don't get the toilet paper thing help me out here like you know i'm sitting here and i'm thinking to myself the world's coming to an end I may not be able to go out anymore. The first thing I think of buying ain't toilet paper. I mean, maybe it's because I'm a novelist. You see, a uh, little handy little merchandising opportunity. I have a, I have a novel. It's called Trust Me. And what can I say? It's got lots of pages. You follow me here? And let's face it, these... You know, these hotcakes are selling like CDs, basically. So, what's happening 
is I've got a lot of paper. Now, I know a lot of you musicians are watching, and I've seen you on gigs, and you're all reading out that damn real book. Now, that real book has a lot of pages for you. So don't worry about the toilet paper. It's the food you need. Plus, you won't even need the toilet paper if you ain't got the food. So please, but for those of you toilet paper fetishists, as I would call them, right? A toilet paper fetishist. That's kind of nice. Um, Gidget here has made a little thing that I want to let you know from Grumps Industries. Let me show you this here. You see this little th little hair thing? This little roll of toilet paper? This is for your charm bracelet. Because obviously, if the first thing you care about is toilet paper, when the shit hits the fan, metaphorically, then maybe you need to wear a charm to show your love of this important product. And we are offering this today for $49.99 from Grumps Industries. Your own toilet paper charm. Show your wife how much you love her. Show her how much you care. You must buy her a charm. Grumps into your little ass, a little bitty... We'll get your little, uh, I think, uh, I think it's his connection available, whatever. I don't know, my internet. Is anybody a good interneter? Uh, you want to come over to the house? I'll yell at you to get off my lawn, but then I'll kiss your ass and give you some toilet paper if you help me get this internet going. Okay. Or if you want one of these. Okay, enough. They say, Grumps, all you're doing is selling shit. It's only been five minutes and you're selling shit. Well, you know... It's tough right now for all of us. Let's face it. A uh, little hand sanitizer. I guess I'll play a little bit because uh, a wise man once said to me, shut up and play. Actually, he was more of an asshole, but I take his point. say sweet and lovely or something like it anyways when in doubt play some music but you know was gonna have call-ins we've got sound effects I've got all sorts of things for you here I see some good friends of mine are watching Nick Granville Troy Troy McCubbin this is my friend who uh, 
who is on my podcast. It's called Guitar Wank. One word, Guitar Wank. I know you think those are kind of the same word, but they're actually two different words put together. And we are at guitarwank.com at iTunes, and so listen to uh, I didn't. That's good. Sorry, uh, Corey Christian should called in. Corey, um, what can I say? Call my wife, but you don't have her number. So, and if you do have her number, I want to know and why. Um, sorry, I wish you could call in, but uh, there's just no way. To Damn it! Aren't you watching? Shit! Get off my lawn! Uh, honey, my hand sanitini is kind of getting low. Gidget, you think you can do something about that? Oh, I'll be right there. Mm hmm That's really good. Well, here was a, here was a thing I was going to do with everybody. It's a new little uh, little fun thing I thought of this morning as I couldn't sleep. I Grumps gets insomnia every now and then. It uh, it just happens when you get older. For those of you who want to know, and this is my new my new my new game. It's called. Corey, if you're listening, stop calling. I can't pick up. I know you want to be on this show, but get your own, okay? <laughs> really, man. I don't bother you when you're working. Woo! Okay, so here we are. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Neil Lazar. Jake, what's up? Oh, man, I can actually see this from all the way across. Let me look at this one more time. Okay, here's my new gig, folks, and you can respond. Wow. Hey, everybody. And it sounds to me like, okay, we got to get going here. This is my new gig, and it's called Strummer or Drummer or Strummer Ooh, or Drummer. Oh, yeah, or Strummer. Yeah, or Drummer. Woo, Strummer. Drummer, drummer. Ooh, that sounds like a dog itching to scratch, don't it? Ooh, that feels so good that my leg's moving fast now because of that. Okay, never mind. Anyways, yeah, right. Okay, strummer or drummer, folks, this is it. Got to give you some pictures. Here's your first guy. See that guy? Oops, hold on. It's going fast. Whoa, whoa. Okay, here's your first one. Strummer or drummer? Come on, somebody write something, quick. Just one person. Oh, yeah, and that, and Bobby Jean? I think that's Bobby Jean Bell. She's right. This is Mike Nesmith of the Monkees. Strummer or drummer? Come on, somebody write something here. Drummer, Terry Silk, she's right. This is a drummer from Germany. I don't know him. His name is Michael Greiner, but he did a, a, a really great article on a great drummer. you got to know about a guy named Frank Butler, who was an L.A. amazing jazz drummer. Had a kind of a tragic history in, of ways, but he played with Miles on Seven Steps to Heaven, and there's a lot of great records of him. Strummer or drummer? Come on, somebody write something. Strummer or drummer? Okay, nobody's watching anymore. That's pretty sad. Grumps is feeling bad. Drunkard, I like that. That was funny, Jonathan Smith. Frank Butler, I think he... Drummer, drummer. No, this is Al Viola. <laughs> Al Viola is a guitar player, was a guitar player, played with Frank Sinatra for a long time. Truly an inspiration. You guys want to check out Al Viola. Okay, I'm going to give you an easy one, folks. Strummer or drummer? Somebody write something. Oh, I see. Bummer. That's nice. I like that. And uh, I think, Troy, you really think this is a drummer, huh? Come on. This is a guitar hero, right? This is Chuck Berry. No one should make that mistake. Okay, I'm going to give you a hard one now. This is a really hard one. Uh, let me think here. Strummer or drummer? 
Okay, Stromer, this is actually Troy McCubbin, my, my, my teammate, my best friend, and my, I got to say, the guy who uh, is my partner in Guitar Wank. I also refer to him as my pet Australian, and everybody needs one of them. When you think about it, Australians, they've sort of, you know, everybody's been watching the Mexican border, but you better watch the Australian border, because these guys are coming in and taking our women and taking our movie jobs and taking our bartending jobs. Just saying. And I'm not being racist. I mean, you know, I can go there, but I'm not. Oh, man. Oh, this beautiful man. Strummer or drummer. Woohoo! Woohoo! Come on, you got to know who this is. This is a very young picture of a guy named Chick Webb. Chick Webb was a drummer. Played with Ella Fitzgerald. That was where she did her first work. Man, check him out. And I guess this is going to be kind of obvious, but you need to know about this guy, too. Can everybody see that strong? He looks really pissed off at something, doesn't he? I can really relate to that. He probably has hemorrhoids, you know, sitting on that drum stool all day long. Anyways, there's the end of Strummer or Drummer. We'll do more of that. Uh, I know that uh, I have a lot of... Ah, ah! Obviously, uh, Gidget likes that. And, you know, I have a lot of... Um, a lot of the guys in there that, frankly, yeah, whatever. I think I better play because, uh, because, oh, no, I got more hand sanitizer here. Okay, and all you companies out there that want to support Grumps TV, well, just send a little liquor my way. Rick Fishman's watching. Okay, I want to give a Rick Fishman line here. has to do with hand sanitinis. You know why martinis are like women's breasts because one's too one's too little and three's too many cheers sorry for butchering your line there rick but you know I'm, i've been drinking hand sanitizer <laughs> anyways okay should i play some drum no i'll play guitar what the hell uh play a little eddie lang for you <laughs> I always like this part. It's like, you know something big's gonna happen. And unlike cocaine, where you think something big's about to happen, in this song, something big is about to happen. That. That's called April Kisses, and I like Gidget. to dedicate it to Gidget, I mean, because she was born in April, and it's called April Kisses, and uh, and I know it, so I like to play it. Anyways, and it's, and for you guitar Nazis out there, it's a little different than the way Eddie did it, but I just sort of changed it, because I like it the way I play it, 
for me, and I like the way he played it for him, and that's kind of the way it goes. And I'm going to try and fix this little tripod a little bit. Oh, man, now I can actually read what, what's on there. Oh, pardon me. Whoa, strummer, strummer, drummer. Julian Tenney is watching. I used to babysit Julian Tenney when I was 17. He probably didn't turn out so good, come to think about it. But, oh, Julian, I hope you're healthy and happy, man. If you are, you're a, you're a, somebody who can, how about Danny Boy a la George Benson? Come on, man. That's, like, got to be, in my opinion, the most stupendous, epic guitar playing I have ever heard in my life. I just want to wish George Benson a happy birthday. It just happened a few days ago. I tried to call him, but his, and his voicemail was full and he wouldn't have picked up anyway, but unbelievably inspirational to me. And uh, maybe I'll play Danny Boy one day, but I don't want to play any sad songs right now. I want to kind of keep it upbeat. I uh, just want to remind you, you're listening to Grump TV. And if you really love this and you want it to keep going, just send me an email or a message and let me know that this is the kind of thing you'd like to see proliferate in the interwebs. I've got lots more things coming here. I got more hand sanitizer, so I ain't going nowhere. Hope you aren't. I want to thank Andy Weiss. Andy Weiss, a great drummer, lives in the Monterey Peninsula area, who loaned me this snare drum. I don't know, you, you all can probably see it off in the corner. Um, let me give you a, a little studio tour. What the hell? We're live. Okay, you see that uh, right there? There's the snare drum. This is a snare drum that his father used to play that he gave to Andy when he was five. This is like some serious mojo in this baby. Um, you can see the, the cow bop antlers with a symbol on it. Yes. And moving around, we have cowbell, woodblock, a gong that Andy loaned me, all these sirens and train whistles and everything and duck calls, which you will hear eventually, came from Andy. And I want to thank him for being sort of the drum center for a guitar player. And, um, oh, hey, Pearl, Pearl Wong is watching. And for those of you who don't know, Pearl was, was a, an epic woman in the, in the history of San Francisco culture. There was a restaurant when I was growing up called the Great Eastern that she had that we used to all go to after hours. I mean, imagine an 18, 19, 20-year-old kid just playing a gig with all these amazing talents like Smith Dobson and Vince Ladiano and, and Al Plank. And then going and hanging out with the guys at the Great Eastern. And at this place, this is when there was Herb Cain, who was a famous columnist, who I later became friends with. And uh, Carol Dota, the world famous stripper, used to come in every night. Or it seemed like every night. At least I hoped every night. And... Uh, we would just hang out, and being Chinatown, we imbibed till the after hours and past the after hours to the, what's after hours? Uh, what's after after hours? I don't know, post F, whatever. Anyway, so we did that, and then Pearl ended up opening an iconic night spot, which I got to be the house trio during the week with uh, Vince Ladiano and John Mattala. And everybody who came through town, because we went late, and Pearl made sure we played till 1 o'clock. You know what I mean? We played till one o'clock. We played industrial strength gigs. And so the cats would all be done with their little sissy ass 1030 shit. And we'd be there and they'd come in and blow their brains out. And they'd love it because, you know, being on the road sometimes, I know it seems all glamorous to someone who doesn't do it, which I doubt any of you are watching. But the fact is, is sometimes, you know, you're playing the same set every night or you're playing with the same guys. This is getting, you know, you kind of worked out the show. You're playing the show, even though it's, Jazz. I love the air quote thing. Jazz. Like, what does it mean? Jazz. Grumps is in air quotes now. Grumps. Anyways, I digress, but I usually do. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Kitchen, where was I? Oh, you were playing a pearl. Oh, playing a pearl. And, and, and all the cats would come in, and, and believe me, that was a scene. You ask anybody who came through San Francisco in the 90s, we were like mopping and bopping. And some of the guys even would, would come and like say, hey, I want to come back and do a night. And we'd let them, and you know, they were burning on the first set and burning on the second set. By about the third set, man, they looked like a horse that had been ridden hard and put up wet. They weren't used to playing that much that long. We had some serious kind of gorilla chops. I don't know what you'd want to call them. 
But that was a lot of fun, and I want to send my love out to Vince Ladiano and John Watala. They're probably not watching. They're probably have something better to do. Vince is, uh, in Vince's own words, he's probably got ants and needs to let them out. So uh, I hope that, that all works. I mean, I've been doing some ant herding myself. Uh, let me think here. Maybe grab the guitar. Oh, maybe now is a good time to mention some merch. I have CDs. Remember these? And I just want to say something about these things. Okay, CDs. Can we talk for a second? Remember when this was like everybody promised us this was the shit? Do you remember? I mean, of course, you young kids don't. But I do remember when they told us that, oh, they're, we're going to move to this new technology. You don't have to have that big thing that's going to you know, that's going to get a bunch of scratches in it and go weird on you all of a sudden, and it's going to warp, and it's super sensitive, and you have to store it, and it takes up your whole house, blah, blah, blah. We'll give you this thing called the compact disc, and it's little, and it can be played, like, real stable, and you don't have to flip it, and, you know, we can put more music on it. And you know what? It's going to be better sounding, and it's going to cost less. That's what they promised us. How did that turn out? Not very good, did it? We did get more music. I don't think it sounds better, but, you know, that's... Hey, I'm not known for my taste. But... Hey, Gidget, this sanitizer is really nice. This Santini's good. Um, Are you drinking it fast? I, I still got a little bit to go. Anyways, what I was saying, if I can remember... Oh, yeah, the CDs. So... They promised us that these things were going to take over. So all we needed to do was go out and buy new equipment and replace all our vinyl with these things, and everything was going to be great. And it kind of was, and we all bought into it, and we all went along with our happy lives, right? Well, now here we are, and what the mm, we got, right? What the mm, we got? We got a bunch of people that are telling us that these don't matter no more. And they want us to pay 10 or 20 or $30 a month to listen to the shit we bought twice already. What the f is this? Grumps is mad. You record companies, get off my lawn. You tech companies, what are you doing here? I already own this shit twice and you want me to pay monthly for it again? So we as a people have to stand up against this and we have to fight back. We have to let the man know he can't do this because the first time, okay, fool me once, your fault. Fool me twice, my fault. So we have to stand up to the man and we have to stay with CDs. Right, Gidget? Right on. Come I, on, give me some love here. I want some record albums, man. Okay, well, so here we have these things. So I'm telling you, here's your way to show uh, to the man. Uh. Buy CDs of musicians. We all got, I mean, these are million sellers, folks. Million sellers. I got a million in the cellar. That didn't get a laugh from Gidget. It was sort of a half-hearted, and my dog just left the room. So anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on here. I just want to let you know that you can have a five-pack, although there happens to be six here, but this would be okay. I'll take one out. And now it's five. You happy? Uh, for those of you who are anal, retentive, or OCD, you're happy. Now. Okay, I got a five pack, and I'm still selling a five for 25 offer, including shipping in the United States. So, let's, you find me, five for 25, I'll ship them to you. Okay, let's make, let's, let's keep the world safe for CDs. Hey, Ruby, Ruby, come here. Come on, meet the people. You know, what's Grumps without his dog? Come on up here, girl. All right, this is Ruby, everybody. She's, she's rather, she's shy. And she doesn't really like to, um, but she does look good with pink and red. I got to admit. She's, of course she does. And she's my girl. And she's one of the sweetest dogs you could ever meet. But don't piss her off, because she's a badass. She's like a fucking honey badger. And, oh. you know, and, and she can sing, I think, too. Can we maybe get some singing, Ruby? Let's see if I can get her to sing now. You forgive my singing, but you'll like hers. Ruby, 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 where did you get those freckles? Ruby, come on, give her the chorus. 
Stars. Woo! I once was a dog, but now I'm a honey badger, and now I'm more like a dog catcher, and then I don't know what the rhymes with dog catcher anymore. Come on, woo! Okay. Okay, let's do a bridge here. Bridge, bridge. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. If anybody wants Ruby for a talent scout, we are going to rent her out because, uh, frankly, the way things are going, you can't get coronavirus from her, but you can from us, so stay away from us. You know? So, uh, wow. That, I mean, W.C. Fields was, said, never follow a dog act or a kid act, and now I'm knowing why. <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay, well, we got still some time to go, so I'm going to play a little bit because that's one good way to uh, burn some time. So I'm going to play something that's totally amazing to me. <laughs> Probably not to you. That makes me thirsty for some hand sanitizer. <laughs> Coming right off. Thank you, Gidget. <laughs> I think, Gidget, you should show off your lovely new outfit, reminiscent of the Polynesian vacations we took back in the aughts. Hope we can go again someday. Well, you know, we got to keep six feet away from the turtles. 
That's the new rule. Well, my dress is there, but where's the rest of me? I don't know. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hey, folks. Mm. You see, this is when TV was really TV. I don't know, you know. I don't know if I'd watch a show like this, but I really appreciate it. I just wish I could read all what you also say. And damn, that's more notes than I play at night. Get on my iPad. Oh, well, why don't you bring your iPad in and I can read your... Sh oh, man. I told you. Okay, and I just want to know that these are personally ionized, frictionalized, and bionized olives with... Jalapenos in them. Hmm, look at that. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. It froze, baby. I don't know what you did. Rick Fishman. It does that. That's what it does. Oh, there we go. But it... Okay, so I got to keep it like he is. Okay, hey, look, you look so beautiful, Pammy. Whoa, love the dress. Get Panelists, yes. these are all your friends. Why are these people watching? I don't know. I have friends. Okay, surprised? well, I just want to say, Ruby, you know, you need to do another trick, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, 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 okay. We're learning the pacing of this show, folks. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to use the dog act later. <laughs> and I want you to know that for those of you who are really bored and or think you missed something, you want to go back, and I think this whole thing will be up on 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 Feces, uh, Facebook. Feces? What? I think that's what I said. I don't know. Facebook. <laughs> Can I get some more olives, Gidget? <laughs> Anyways. Um, my wish is your command. <laughs> your wish is my command. I know that. That's no. kind of the way my life goes. My wish Thank is you. your command. I'm the comedian here, honey. Uh, anyways, get off my lawn. <laughs> Okay, I just wanted to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually contractually obligated to do that. Okay, I've gone through everything here. But there's one more thing. But maybe I'll play something pretty for the people that don't like a lot of notes. Okay? This is for you. How'd you like that? Yeah. I just played the right amount of notes. One, right? Was it the fifth? Was it the root? Was it the third? Was it the flat ninth? Well, let's see what happens here. I got that G note I played. But now, really, flat nine. And I'm actually playing in... Here he comes again. can become the major third of E flat. Grumps is mystified. 
Or maybe he's just drunk. play, there's all these attitudes to every note, and it all comes down to the person playing, and most important to me, the person listening, because they, they're the one who can make, complete that connection and make that note have meaning. And now I've got a tape delay, and geez, I'm just kind of going. Anyways, so thank you, folks. For enjoying, no, yeah, I don't know if you're enjoying. You're probably hating this shit. Anyways, I am, but I think I'm gonna do this again next week. Now that I know that my internet will support the phone, but fuck the laptop. I'm going there, and I'm gonna set up some call-ins. I had some great call-ins. We had Corey Chris Jansen trying to break in on us, and you know, okay, that was an okay call-in. But you know, there were some others that were gonna be better. I'm sure. And I don't I mean that in the in the in the in the in the truest possible way, Corey. Uh one of my dear friends, guy plays more guitar than well, should be allowed by law. Okay. You know I have an issue with this. I've just gotta get get it out of my system. Sorry, Ruby. Oh, like that. Oh. I'm mad. Oh, and I just broke something. Oh good. These little things, handy little sons of bitches. I can put them on the end of my guitar, and while everybody talks, and while everybody tunes their drums, and while everybody tinkles on their ivories, and while everybody blows their saxophone because they don't got the right kind of reed that they need, I can't tune up. But I can now because I've got this cool little handy little plastic piece of bullshit, and I can just do this in the quiet and not bother the audience and not tell everybody to stop talking. 
and kind of get my shit together here. One of the best inventions, I, I think, ever. But can I just say something? It's also one of the stupidest from a cosmetic point of view. And so may I, might I suggest to my brethren guitar players, and you know who you are, Take these motherfuckers off after you're done using them. Look at this guitar. This guitar is made by an amazing luthier. This guitar has taken over my life. This is an amazing instrument. You see that headstock? I mean, you may not be into this kind of stuff, but that to me is sexy. You know, and put a piece of $15 bullshit plastic on the end of it, you know, and what do you got? You got sexy with a bad hairdo or something. I don't know. Don't do this. Have some self-respect. And I know everybody says to me, oh, grumps, 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 there you go again. The get off my lawn shit, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It only matters what it sounds like. Not true. I don't agree. I'm going to say right here, I'm a proponent of playing in tune. Loving that. But damn, it does matter what it looks like. And I can tell you all don't think it matters from the way you dress. <laughs> so wow. time to get it together and look in the fucking mirror before you leave the house. Oh, was that your second best cleanest t-shirt? Come on, everybody. People are watching you play. You want them to. When all this is over, if we ever get to play again, <laughs> let's get it, let's give ourselves a chance here okay right get it on. together right get it together on. it looks a certain way a guitar maker developed a shape for a headstock that is not only beautiful but also is their brand because let's face it the rest of the stuff is pretty conventional this is the one place that they can let the world know who they were and you're shoving a piece of $15 plastic on the son of a bitch I don't think that that's right. right. I don't think it's good, and I don't think it's self-respecting. Not. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Gidget. I appreciate your your uh, endorsement. You. I I'm guess. I'm with you on that one. I'll drink to that. Okay. I'm drinking to it too. For all of you that got in late, I just want to say welcome. You missed a, a rather a strange misstart because my. My laptop and the hamsters were dying, I guess, I don't know, and I had to go to my phone, which killed the, the phone in for all my guests I planned, which will be in the next weeks. And um, I just need to let you know that we're coming around to the end of the hour, and I feel I've abused your privilege more than, uh, well, more than I'd like to admit. I'm going to play a little bit. No, actually, you know what I'm going to do? How's your drinks, Grumps? Oh, oh Gidget, good. I can always use more hand sanitini there. Yeah. Okay. Come on, let's go, because uh, it's almost over. Go ahead and walk in front of the camera, everybody. Oh, there she is. Look, there's already 120 people watching. That's more than ever came to one of my gigs. Ooh. Maybe this stuff works after all. Yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, when this is all done... Let's all meet up somewhere and have a hand sanitini. I wrote a little poem about what's going on today. I didn't have much time to practice it, but I, I'm going to kind of just kind of put it all together here. I got the drum set. I'm going to put the snares on because I think that's even better. Oh, yeah, it makes it's sort of like, you know, pretty juice on the guitar. He's sort of like, oh yeah, he's sloppy, but he's swinging, you know. Okay. Anyways, we got that, and I'm going to play, and I wrote a poem for you all. I don't know if you know that I'm a poet laureate of a famous beer company, but uh, or I used to be. They just haven't let me know that I'm not anymore. Anyways, you know, the good thing is you either are a poet laureate or you're an ex-poet laureate, which is looks good on your resume either way. But I've dedicated this to kind of what we're going through today, and, I sure hope you like it. It was written this afternoon, so if I'm a little uh, awkward with my presentation, just imagine how good it's going to get. But I'm hoping that I don't have to do it for much longer. And wishing health and wealth and happiness and...
Mostly health for y'all. Corona, Corona, wish I could dethrone you. Wish that I could stone you. Wish that you was alone you. Corona, what's with that silly name? And what's with all of your sudden fame? If you ask me, you be lame. And this ain't some silly game, baby. Now drum solo. Here we come back. Corona and your quarantine. It's gotten downright Byzantine. You nasty drama queen. Like to throw you off the mezzanine, you goddamn little no good bug. Corona, you're just a nasty host. You tie us to a whipping post. You hide in plain sight like a ghost. Wish I could make you yesterday's toast. Okay, and some more drums. And some cymbals. Boom. While your aim is to expire us, or mainly to retire us, we're going to make you admire us and show you we can inspire us. not what you want to hear. And while you're trying to install all that fear, we're going to take you, give you a kick in the rear. Corona, you was so much better when you was a beer. Yeah, that's what I feel. I hope that meant something to somebody. It sure meant a lot to me. I wish I could have had time to practice it, but you know, I wrote it a second ago. So, um, wow, this has been really fun. I'm obviously going crazy and driving Gidget even crazier because we're in a very small space and I'm a big person. I just can't help it. I'm yelling, I'm screaming, I'm mad, and the interwebs are not treating me right. And so what can I say? Please hang out. But remember, of all the things we did here today, and actually, there's one more thing that I had even planned to say. But you know, it's going to have to wait because I got to go away. Do you realize I just rhymed like six things? Hey, Grubs, get off my lawn. I ain't no prawn. Be gone, be gone. You don't have to fawn. Okay. There is one thing I did want to finish off with, and I don't know where I put it. And, of course, oh, and I'm spilling my hand sanitine. Um, hey, Gidget, you see where the, the charm went? I want to want to remind everybody about the charm. Did you take it? No. You didn't take it? I'm going to blame you for it. Well, you know that it's Ruby did it, then, damn it. Probably. You guys my shit. What is happening around here? Did you pee on that? It's, <laughs> Where? You're pointing at something. I'm looking for the charm, and I don't see nothing. Huh? You're laughing at me. I need your help, and you're laughing at me. This is what my life is like, folks. I know you go down. Them, you guys that are married, you know about this. I'm wondering why this is wet. What did you? I had, I had a couple of spills. Did you have an accident? I had a couple of spills. Oh. Girl. Anyways, like, Grumps is messy. We all know that. Okay. We don't expect Grumps to be a neat one of them tied the tidy whitey kind of guys. <laughs> tidy whitey. <laughs>
Anyways, I'm hoping that you saw... Oh, here, I got it. I got it. Okay, reminder. The toilet paper. You guys and your toilet paper. We understand that that is like the most important thing to you. Hey, you know, okay. Look, Bebop is the most important thing to me. I know how weird that is, so I can get with that. I get how, like, strange shit is. Okay, so, let's be honest. You want to show someone you really care. You love them. Well, Grumps Industry is now offering a little charm of a toilet paper roll. For $49.99, again, $49.99, $99.98 for two, you can have this charm, and you can show your loved one how much you care. Because obviously, this is the ultimate way, the epitome of love, devotion, and caring. So go there with this and order one of these. You just find me and you say, Grumps, we got to have one. Got to have two. Got to have 2,000. And if you know any gin distillers, we could use some help with the hand sanatinis because the Purell is really kind of overwhelming this particular gin I'm using. So, and, uh, and it's more expensive, as I said. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for... Uh, Oh, damn, I did something wrong here, honey. Gidget, Gidget, what did I do? Oh, no. What happened? Now? I messed up. I don't know. I don't see anything anymore. Oh, yeah, I do now. Okay, it came back. <laughs> Never mind. Um, okay. I, oh, look at this. Okay, I'm just going to read some shit now that I've got some media. Um, Quiff Wooly. Wow, it's snowing now in Tokyo in 10 a.m. on Sunday. So we know we're going to make it to Sunday. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, I guess Guitar Neck is now Scott Henderson myself. Oh, Troy thinks I'm leaving Guitar Wank. Guitar Wank is Bruce Foreman. I'm Grumps. Let's get this straight. You know, uh, I'm schizophrenic and so am I. Let's just keep it that way. Uh, nice things... Single or double ply? Oh, wow. It's maxi ply. Man, we don't go to... I'd like to order 5,000 of the toilet paper charms. Okay, well, we can work something out. I think we can go down to like forty nine ninety four with you. Okay, you know. better get to work. Okay, we're going to get you, get the factory going. Okay. Uh, Howard Paul, the great Howard Paul, great guitar player. He happens to be the CEO of Benedetto Guitars, which... I don't play, but if I did, I would. And uh, go to bed, Grumps, you're drunk. Okay, yes, I plan to do that, but it's only 6 o'clock. Uh, liked, didn't like, hated, you promised, nice. Oh, come on, quit blowing smoke up my ass, people. Oh, my little sister, Derry Foreman, who I am the worst. Okay, Grumps has to admit something. I'm going to do this in public. I'm the worst deadbeat brother you could ever find. I have a sister that I don't stay in touch with, and I'm, like, practically around the corner from her. And she's got two lovely children and a wonderful husband, and she's one of the greatest people in the world. And I'm just too fucking busy to do anything. And now that I'm in quarantine up in Carmel Valley and I'm further away from her, I couldn't see her if I wanted to. And I think all of us need to realize... That with this moment in time, we need to recalibrate and see what's important to all of us. Family, being good to each other, uh, obviously being good to the earth. Think about how much Mother Nature is taking a breath now without all those planes and without all those car trips. Although she is upset about the toilet paper. Um, Grumps is getting really for Klempt here. And that's that's uh, that's English for Yiddish for, for Klempt. Um, what can I say? It's time for us all to be good to each other, to reach out to each other, to realize how much time we spent getting somewhere and how little time we spent being somewhere. And for that, I just want to share with you that I'll be back next week if there is an incredible rush and demand, I will make a special edition in the midweek. 
uh, but I seriously doubt it. Um, and I probably won't be out of detox before that. But if I am and you want it, I'll come back because I've got guests. I've got, I, I have two or three skits that I plan to do, but I'm, the hour has just flown by. And I also want to mention a few friends that I asked to invite. Uh, Josh Nelson, a great piano player who I've played with over the years, has a little Friday 6 o'clock thing he calls Manhattan Teen. It's the Manhattan drink and the quarantine. Very clever. Uh, for those of you people that are obtuse, opaque, and basically thick, I'm explaining that. Um, you might want to check that out. Uh, let's all just reach out to each other, wish each other health, take care of each other, do what we need to do to get past this and learn from it and really make lemonade out of lemons because Grump really gives a shit. He wants you off his lawn, but he gives a shit. And now we're going to sing the little theme song we wrote because most of the people who are watching now probably have turned me off so we're gonna have to sing do the new song for it's also online a produced version but we're gonna give you the home version of the grumps tv theme if i can get gidget back i don't know if i pissed her off hey gidget yeah come on we got to finish this up here oh yes darling mr grumps did you bring your lyrics or do you have it memorized you're doing it again yeah we're gonna do it again at the end of course here he is, right here. I got it. Oh. See, you know, I mean, back in the days, think of think of the luxury Johnny Carson had. I mean, besides being talented. <laughs> I mean, besides being talented, he had 50 people doing shit. They were wiping his ass with good toilet paper, I might say. Boy, I bet they wish they saved that shit right now. You know what I mean? They probably wasted it. Anyways, I, I digress. I, or I undress, or one of those things. But anyways, we'd like to say to you. No, we don't really like to say goodbye to you, but we're going to say goodbye to you. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Maybe in the midweek if you're desiring. You ready? Don't try to cross him. He'll leave you in dismay. And don't try to boss him. He'll ruin your whole day. He's got more mental problems than a shrink could ever say. He's obfuscating, prevaricating, and constantly pontificating, procrastinating, cream cheese grating, and forever belly aching, exasperating, aggravating, irritating, infuriating, and such an asshole. Get off my lawn! That's Grumps. How do I turn it off? Turn it off!